Chris Peaks here back with my man, Chris Pahakis, talking a little college football. Um, you know, usually we save this to the end, but I can't help it, man. I got to get jump right into the room. Um, uh-huh. A man proved to me that this is a team that is for real. This is the first time they faced true adversity. Um, you know, couldn't get nothing right in in the first quarter. Could have been down twenty one nothing. Um, down twenty seventeen. You know, stopped them on that fourth and one, and threw you know pick in the uh, end zone. Let them come down and get a field goal. Uh, and that team showed resiliency in a team that is hungry. Um, I I believe they are a legitimate national championship team. Yeah. Um, I I think what they showed me today is that with the 2023 Alabama squad, it truly is a tale of two teams. And... You know, I guess it's one of those where it's like, what team is going to show up? Um, If you look at the way the season went, uh, Texas kind of took some wind out of their sails and it took them a minute to get their mojo back, if you will. And then... If they they played Texas again, they would beat them. they, they, They sailed pretty well up until the second half of Arkansas where the wind got taken out of their sails again. And it seems like there's been one team that played against Texas, against USF, and then the second half at Arkansas and the first half today. And then there was another team that's played every other, every other game this year. And you know, I, I, you know, my biggest complaint about them is their lack of production in uh, the second half. I mean, they certainly fixed that, but I think they Mine forgot to a, play in the first and second quarter too. So my inability you know. is to run the ball. Mm-hmm. At times they will run it. Now, like you know, in the fourth quarter, they mm-hmm. impose their will. You know, they put together yeah. two good drives that basically killed the clock. Yeah. Um, There's still a lot of really silly errors that are very uncommon for, you know, a Saban team. Like the another, the another, another snap infraction. And I know Kool-Aid McKinstry has fumbled at least twice, I think, on punt returns this year. But if he's afraid to catch the ball now, then he needs to get somebody else back there. I mean, the first one, he might have misjudged it, but that second one that bounced at the 30 and rolled all the way to the one-yard line, and he's got to catch that ball. He had to actually move out of the way so the ball didn't hit him. That was a very crucial point of the game because – I mean, obviously, Saban didn't want to take any risk, and it went from, you know, trying to trying to eat some of the clock up to, um, to, to just trying to punt in a you know out of the end zone, because you know, that's what they were doing. Their 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 three plays they ran, they weren't really going for a first down. They were just trying to get some breathing room to punt. And uh, he put him in a, in a really bad position. Yes, he did. Um, so you know what else is improved? silly mistakes like that are the things that concern me because really silly mistakes doesn't uh, doesn't happen they get, too much. They will get you be against Oklahoma or Florida mm-hmm. State or uh, Texas. You know what's really impressed me about this team um, is the fact that. Um, if you shut their run game down, they can make enough plays with Milrose legs and him completing passes to beat you. Yeah. He's developing into a quarterback that can win you a game if he has to. At the beginning of the season, I thought there's no way he could ever win us a game if it, if it depended on his shoulders. 
I have more confidence in him now. I'm not saying, you know, he's um Tua by no means, but I have more confidence in him now than I did at the beginning of the season. Are you laying on the floor? Yeah, man, my, my back's <laughs> hurting. Because he made some good runs there where he took off, you know, he got us some first downs, kept those drives going. Yeah. But, man, you know we have given up 48 sacks? That doesn't surprise me. I mean, we're averaging like five, six a game. I mean, what, one of the problems is Milrow takes way too many sacks. I mean, he he's got to get rid of the ball. We take sacks that are outside the tackle box. You should never take a sack that's outside the tackle box. And no. he's taking a run. Yeah. I mean, if yeah, run-in's another option, but it's like he's trying to scramble around to find something. But, I mean, that's probably an area he really needs to work on is finding his next read because, oh, you know, he, he doesn't thing. have that ability to throw guys open, you know, like some of the better quarterbacks in the past have had. So when he kind of – everybody looks covered, he's got to just either take off or throw it away. He's got to quit taking those sacks. That's something that I, I uh, Lincoln, I seen put in the offense today that may cause some taste of trouble is when they ran the option. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with them. I'm I'm I'm, yeah. I'm happy. Well, defense look good again. Defense got them under a defensive score. Um. Happy for yep. those guys. I know they because they, they got one taken off uh, uh, against A and M, but uh, they got him a touchdown. Um, now Malachi's so back. Pass rusher. Hmm. I'm so glad to have a pass rusher. Yeah, Braswell's turning into a really good pass rusher. You know, of course, um, Turner is a great pass rusher, and um, yeah, I mean they got. They did much better on the pressure the second half. They they weren't getting – see, that's why I say it's a tale of two teams. First half, you know, they weren't getting pressure. The, the, the O-line was allowing people through. We were giving up sacks. It was like Texas and USF all over again. And um, so, yeah, it is a tale of two teams. I mean, but until they as – a team play a whole four quarter game and look like they did in the second half today, then I can't put them as a contender. I mean, cause they've got to prove they can go four quarters because they, you're going to have to go four them. quarters. Yeah, they're, they're getting close. Yeah. Um, but that you're going to have to go four quarters to beat Georgia you know, you're going to have to go four quarters oh, yeah. to beat Florida State, you know, Ohio State. And those teams are going to play four quarters, period. You and um, four quarters to beat Auburn, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, Auburn always plays us four quarters. It doesn't matter how bad they are. They're going to play, you know. Simple as that. They're going to play. And, and you know oh. what? The same for LSU. LSU is yeah. not going to just say, well, we're going to come in and lay down. I mean, they're, they're, they're very, hey, they only got one conference loss. And they're very much controlling their own destiny right now. Oh, man, my but, pig. Yeah, man, I thought they were going to get this one today. Well, she's up in this one. I mean, almost up in this one. What's what's the score now? It was fourteen all now it's twenty seven fourteen. Yeah, I was with you man. I thought they was gonna get the win. Um Well I was gonna say that this Florida State Duke game has been, you know, what I anticipated it would be. And I mean it has. But what I was a little was worried the, that Duke was going to be exposed, but I was well, wrong. Yeah, well, their quarterback just went down, and he's being worked on on the field. He got spun around pretty good. Boy, I missed oh. um, 
I missed uh, Penn State and Ohio State. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. It was a real okay. – it was a sleeper. I call it, it, it really was a sleeper. It was – Ohio State uh, physically dominated them. Yeah, I mean, it, it – it, there, but there wasn't a lot of offensive production out of either team. Right. Uh, uh, but it was it was a sleeper. But I mean, oh, I got something for you. So, you know how we talk about how it doesn't really matter what your overall record and stuff like that is. That is really what you do in the big games. So let me ask you your opinion. If you just off the cuff, how do you think James Franklin's done at Penn State? That is a tough question. Okay. Because let me let me tell you why I ask it that way. Because I saw a stat today that kind of surprised me a little bit. On the road versus ranked opponents. That's not top ranked. That's ranked. Top 25. On the road. History at Penn State for James Franklin, 2 and 12. Wow. Against top 10 opponents on the road, 0-9. Wow. Now, these next two are not on the road. They're just in general. Against top five opponents, 1-10 versus Ohio State, 1-8. and eight. Wow. I thought he had done better than that. I did, Personally, too. Yeah. Dude, I think that right there is uh, grounds for dismissal. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it kind of goes back to what we've always said, you know, what's your goal? Uh, if you can't beat your, you know, team, if you can't beat the good teams and you can't beat your rivals, um, and, yeah. you know, you think about, you think about, Penn, you know, Pennsylvania, they've really got nobody recruited against, against Pittsburgh. I mean, yeah. They've been a you know a power for years. I mean, this shouldn't be. They shouldn't be this like this. I'm surprised there hasn't been more uproar from the fans about getting rid of him. Yeah, I mean, I I thought he had done better than that, honestly. But, um, but I mean, it's been the name of the game in college football for for years. Uh, you got to be saving. You know, Pad your stats and make your overall record look great. I mean, but then not win the big ones. And then when when the boosters and all those guys who probably don't even watch the dang games sit there and they're like, well, heck, this guy's got a, you know, 700-something winning percentage. We ain't getting rid of him. But, you know. Do you remember that year when stats. he was like that year when he was like um seven and oh and he said we don't fear Bama but Bama needs to fear us and then he lost like his last four games and you know didn't he make it yeah, to his I think that, was that the same year that um you know everybody was doing that we want Bama stuff yeah and getting beaten yeah. blown up fifty six yeah, to nothing and I'm pretty certain that everybody who really did that did lose. Um man, obviously. Yeah. Um Oregon was one of them. Uh I guess Penn State was another one, probably. 
Ohio State because, I mean, the national championship that year was Auburn and Florida State. Um, uh, Vanderbilt. Is that the year they were running their mouths? There was yeah. one year. There, there was Vanderbilt, one year. That... Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt beat um, Kansas State like mm. 19 to 10 in the opening wow. game, and they printed up those shirts, we want Bama. Yeah. Well, there there was uh, – I know there was one year. This couldn't have been that year because this was uh, – Tua was pl uh, playing this year. This had to have that been 20, 2016. That was Tua about the wasn't the starter. Yeah, Tua wasn't the starter. Uh, it was Jalen's year that he was the starter. Um, so it would have been 2017. And Tua came in. Because yeah. I think they were undefeated when they played Alabama that year. But, I mean, they, they had a couple games, games that were upsets. But, you know, their schedule was pretty soft. And they were talking like, hey, it's undefeated versus undefeated. We're going to finally get Bama. And I'm like. 66. Uh, yeah, it was that like 56 was, nothing, yeah. But that was around the same year because, you know, he didn't – that old man, he didn't retire until just a couple of years ago. Who's that? Bill Snyder. Oh. Uh, uh, that man was phenomenal. And today's been kind of a rough day with my – my, yeah, how are you uh, doing? Arm. Yeah, it's, it's been. I'm trying to come off the pain medicine. So I sure did want to enjoy a glass of wine during the show tonight, like I usually do. And I'm trying to be responsible and not mix it with my pain meds. So I needed to be off 24 hours before I could drink any alcohol. So I tried. Didn't make it. So. so. But, okay, let me get if, back. Yeah, it flared up on me, but anyway, man. Uh, I don't know if you've got it on or not, but this uh, Duke's backup quarterback, I'm watching, yeah, I'm yeah, watching he, it. They, uh, he got him down to the goal line. I don't know, hey, hey, I don't know what uh, Duke's got going on there. I walked out of the room for a second, so I didn't stage and then you got him in the end zone. Uh, Yeah, my arm got in the way of my cigar. I couldn't really stay. I couldn't really stay on my feet for. Uh, Let me ask you something. Uh huh. Top twenty-five schedule, and I know this is not the, the BCS rankings, uh -huh. but do you have Washington? At number five with two first place votes. No. I'd put Washington about seven or eight. I mean, it, it would be hard for me to keep them above Alabama or and North mm -hmm. Carolina. Yeah, I mean, they're, they'll get exposed once they make it to the playoffs, but unfortunately it's not going to be till then. Um, but tonight they've got a late game with uh against Arizona State, who's one and five, so they're favored by 28. Let's see if they just plow over them or if they have a hard time with them. Like, uh, I mean, I haven't seen Washington win any games convincingly, I mean. I miss the Pac-12. I mean, yeah, I know they're they're. And you know, man, 
one thing I can't understand is how Southern Cal is not in the top five every year. I mean, you're on Hollywood, and you can't recruit there. Well, I mean, they can. I think that your average football player could care less about Hollywood, though. Yeah. Like, they get a lot of non-football players. Yeah. They Right now, Utah is beating USC. You know, that's a good one I think I could recruit at and win. What's that? And you're going to sound all crazy. But I guarantee you I could find 11 good football players to come to Hawaii. Shit. Man, come play in paradise for four years. that, man. Hey, come. um. Look hey, at the level uh, of competition. I'm not here, saying that. Here's, here's, I'm saying look at the level of competition they're playing. You can't yeah. tell me you can't go get some kid that's never been anywhere in his life and say, hey, man, come play in paradise for let, four years. Let, let me ask you something. Um, so today – Two teams that two weeks ago we both had in our top four struggled with UCF and Houston. Okay. So what do you think about that? Um, well, both teams were on buys last week. What you got to remind me of is because I went out and bought a new TV and they mm-hmm. sent me out my new Wi-Fi thing uh, and mm-hmm. – they the box wouldn't work, so I've been watching football on my uh, phone all day. So That's I've sucks. been all right. Game. So Texas beat Houston by a touchdown, and it came down to Houston having the ball at in the red zone and uh, turnover on downs. Um, so it was very close. UCF and Oklahoma, UCF led most of the game. Oklahoma did finally come back and went up by eight. And then UCF got a touchdown and it came down to the two point conversion, which they didn't get. So sometimes, man, I think that just happens because I can think back over the years when, you know, Alabama won the national championship and they blocked two field goals against. Tennessee. Yeah, um, that Tennessee team was not a very good team. They yeah, there was another five. year that they, they they they've annually struggled with Tennessee. Uh there was another year that it, it was a I think it was a Derek Dooley Tennessee team that you know I think we beat them by six. And it came and and there was an interception at the very end. Uh you know that kind of thing. Um, so it was, and I mean, Tennessee had the ball with, you know, like a minute and some change left down by six. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty close. And so I'm with you on that. I think that having a buy after a big game sounds like kind of a bad idea to me. Um, just because it's, it's, it's like you, you come back, you, you've had the big game, then you have the bye. And I, have you ever seen a team come off a bye and just be firing on all cylinders looking great? I mean, I feel like they come out flat every time. It's like, you know what? We don't want a bye week. (laughs) it's like uh i mean which that's what we've got now you know between tennessee and lsu we've got a bye week and hopefully they can stay huh i thought it's like kentucky next no first week of november just like always lsu let yeah, me double but, check just to make sure I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure all she's after it. Nope. LSU 11 4. Kentucky's 11 11. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, well, I remember back in the day, and I know football was different then, but in this 
offense may actually work today in today's system better. But, you know, when you ran the ball 80% of the time, and I remember Alabama was playing two lane. Mm-hmm. And it's late in the fourth quarter. And Tulane's got the ball at like their own 40. And they punt to Alabama. Six nothing. Gonna pin Bama deep. And David Palmer takes the punt return and goes 90 yards for a touchdown. I mean, sometimes you just gotta have those games. Yeah. And, and I think it builds character and, and shows you what it's like. It, it it does, and I think we talk about it all the time, you know, any given Saturday night in our case, since we're talking uh, college, um, you know, anybody can win. You know, anybody can take one. It, it's um, – oh, my goodness. Every time we get behind a team, North Carolina just dropped one to Virginia. Oh, did they really? Yeah. We must be the kiss of death. We compliment somebody and they go down. Um, I, I I've got I've got uh an interesting couple questions that I thought of earlier that I'd like to pose to you. What yeah. is your biggest surprise so far this year? Good or bad? Biggest surprise? Actually, good, because we'll go surprise, good, disappointment, bad. So we'll do the disappointment in a minute. What What's your biggest surprise of this season so far? What team? I guess my biggest surprise of a team, you talking about good or bad? Good, good, good on this one. We'll do the disappointment in a minute. You know, it's going to be a toss up mm. between Florida State, because I didn't see this coming, and Oklahoma being five and seven and then to bounce back the way they did. Mm-hmm. Um, one other, I guess, what am I looking for a disappointment or surprise? Well, here, let me do mine first. So, I'm going to say Duke. And the reason I say Duke is because, you know, this is a team who's never really been much of a contender. And if they do somehow get in a championship game, it's just been fodder for the number one team, really. And um, uh, they started the season off with an upset. And in this game right now, they're competing. It's not like, I mean, you know, during the first quarter, they went up and then Florida State started kind of coming back. And I thought, well, they might end up doing kind of like Oklahoma did earlier. They were having a bad game. They went down, they went up, you know, the better team then takes it over kind of like Ole Miss is doing now. But no, I mean, Florida State did get back in the game, but Duke still has the lead, and they're competing. They're competing hard, and it it's getting close they're, to they're the, the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're they them being a legit ACC competitor is a big surprise for me. Man, uh, would it not? I, I'll, I'll put them I over Florida know. State because even though Florida State does have a a tremendous improvement, and Oklahoma has a tremendous improvement, it's still Florida State and Oklahoma. You know, you it never know exactly any that. year they break off and have an undefeated season. You know, that, that's that been their story for the last, you know, 30 years. And um, if they so, got in the so, playoffs. Yeah. So that would be pretty amazing. That would be the Cinderella, man, if Duke. Yeah. So what's, what, what's your biggest disappointment? Um. Let me try to explain this to make it make sense. My di- my biggest disappointment is how Dion built this Colorado team up into being a national championship power when they was going to be nothing but a six and six, and he just basically shit the bed. Yeah, 
Um, my biggest disappointment as a team is Kentucky. Really? Yeah. I'm going to say Clemson. And my reasoning for that is, you know, they hadn't been in the top four, top five for a few years now, but they've still been a strong team, you know, one loss, maybe two. Um, they've still yeah. been a top, a perennial top 10 team. Right now, man, they're not even ranked. Let me ask you this, though. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a good, what, six, five, six, seven year run there. Yeah. But did you ever expect him to be able to maintain it like you could at an Alabama or a Georgia or a school like that? You know, I wasn't sure. I, I, I thought maybe the thing he had going for him was that he kept all of his assistants. Um, you know, he he did have you know, he didn't have every season because you know there was a a season in between Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence where they weren't as strong, but they did still make the playoffs. Um. But, but I didn't I didn't expect it to fall this far. Yeah, I, I agree. You know. Um I wanna say one of the biggest I don't know surprises is, but let me tell you what's made this Alabama team from what it is now and instead of three and four. And that's one person. Mm-hmm. Kevin Steele. All right, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. One person, uh huh, has made has kept is has got this team from the difference between being seven and one and three and four, four and three, and that's Kevin uh -huh. Steele. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, uh, that guy's phenomenal. I mean, what he's you look at that defense last year compared to this year. I mean, his players yeah, are I mean, in the right one position. offense to fix the pa the pass rush, the the defensive backfield and their coverage. Uh, you know, Not being out of position. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, that, 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 that just shows me that it was a mess before. Yeah, it was a complete and total mess before. Because, I mean, a lot of these guys are the same players they had. I mean, I think they had even better players last year. Oh, I do too. You know? One of my buddies said that if it had been Brian, um, I always forget his name, the office coordinator, Brian, um, God, what was his name? Anyway, I love his office coordinator. He said after that game um, against Tennessee, he would have went and hit Duval right in the face. <laughs> He said that's probably the best call game by Bill O'Brien and, and and Hurts that you know that ever play you know and Alabama was just a master masterpiece. He said I'd have punched yeah. him right in the face as soon as we walked off the field. I'd have hit him right in the face. <laughs> yeah, kind of uh, kind of the direct opposite of what was going on. Even in some of the games where they didn't perform as well, the defense was still good, you know, and it's like you sit here and hold a team to either make them punt, field goal, something like that, and defense three and out. Or, I'm sorry, offense three and out. Three and out. Three and out. It's, it's exhausting sometimes. Well, you remember, you know, sorry to get off top of here, but in that national championship game against Clemson when – you know, they took Kiffin away from play calling and brought Sarkeesian down. And, you know, we had the lead 24-14, and we punted 13 straight times in a row in the second half. Mm -hmm. I mean, get off the – I mean, God. So, right now, who – um, 
couple of things going. Who's coach of the year? I mean, to me, it's more done. No, Steve. no question about it. Save it. Save him. Yeah. I mean, I would agree, but we try try to not show our Alabama bias. So I feel like I need to come up with another contender. Okay. Uh, we got Florida State. Yeah. Um, the guy in Oklahoma. Oh, big hurdle. Uh, got Duke. I, I'm thinking Duke because I mean this is they've won some quality games. They've won some real quality games, and um. I mean, and right now they're competing with who I would still put as the number one team in the nation. That Florida State's getting ready to take the lead, though. But, hey, man, the fourth quarter just started here. This could be a fun little fourth quarter. Yeah, we, I got, I'm going to look up and figure out how to uh, pull that up where we can watch that Nebraska thing together. Mm-hmm. What position do you play in football? Uh, defensive line and linebacker. I bet you were the hard hitter. Uh, man, to be honest with you, I wasn't that good at football. It wasn't, uh, I'm... I was kind of a late joiner. I didn't play before high school. I remember one time I went back to the huddle and almost, uh, uh, slap my quarterback. Um, we were running a, a pass over the middle, and he throws the ball to me right in between two middle linebackers, and I just ducked almost, you know, for both of them just collided right into me. So one game we didn't talk about yesterday – probably because neither team is ranked and it wasn't on our radar, was Clemson and Miami. Because, I mean, even though those two teams' season is pretty much done, uh, I kind of was interested to see what they do head-to-head because both teams have some games against some contenders coming up. So... So I still think Clemson is a good program and is a good test for any team. And can come back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean they're well, they're they're okay. So Clemson's at four and two. Um, in my opinion, their two losses are quality losses. I think they should be in the top twenty five. I think it's criminal that they're not. Um and I mean, in this case, they're lost. They have a loss against Florida State, and they've got a loss against my uh, not Miami, um, Duke. And those two teams are battling it out right now. And if I remember correctly, the Clemson, um, Florida State game was a pretty close game. You know, it was thirty-one twenty-four. So, and it was overtime. So they took. Florida State to overtime, so they're still a contender. And I don't really know what a successful season will look like for them. They got a game coming up against Notre Dame in two weeks. Obviously, winning that one would be huge for them. And then they got a game against North Carolina. You know, get those two quality wins and then play in a decent bowl game. I mean, I still think everybody thinks I'm crazy. I think that Ole Miss game could be dangerous for Georgia. Think so? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if Georgia's looking ahead and some things go Ole Miss's way.
and the fact that Clem both of Clemson's losses were conference losses could haunt them. As if Duke loses tonight, then in order for Clemson to get in, Duke, North Carolina, Louisville, and Virginia Tech would all need to drop one more conference game to get into the ACC championship. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't either. Yeah, so much, so much. Um, so Alabama's got LSU next week. Not next week. They got to buy next. Okay. Okay. Good. Give the players to get healed up. Yeah. Uh I, mean, I don't think we got many injuries right now, but you know, hey, there's probably a lot of guys playing hurt. I want you to think about something for a minute, because you know, All I know right. how much you love. I know how much you loved him, and you know, thought thought how great he was as a trainer and everything. But did you notice, like the last three or four years, how we'd have 10, 10, 12, 15 players out with injuries when Cochran was the strength and conditioning coach? Are you there? Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, what happened there? I don't know. Did you notice? I don't know how much you loved him. I thought he was the greatest. And, you know, and I did too. And he's still great. You know, had fire people up. But did you not notice how, like, the last four or five years Cochran was there? We'd have 15, 16 players injured by the end of the season. I mean, but we've had it at the sense too. You know, I don't think it really had anything to do with him. I think that just the nature of the game. I'll tell you another thing. Remember how many injuries we had in the opening games every year? Oh, and yeah. every opening game was played in a dome on artificial turf. Tore me up every time. Uh -huh. So I think... I think mean, there's a lot of factors. I don't think it's something that could be put on Cochran. I can't believe it took them so long to get away from that. I don't know. I enjoyed the games, but, you know. It was just too I dangerous. I can see how it be. Huh? It was just too dangerous for the players. I mean, think about it. That one year that we played Florida State, beat them pretty good, and at the very end of the game, when they're down, you know, four or five touchdowns, they lose their quarterback for the season. I mean, you was born in, what, 81? Yeah. So, what, Curry was the first coach you can remember? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess that's really the first one I remember. There was a, I may have told you this about this before, but Alabama was playing Miami in the Sugar Bowl. Mm -hmm. And Alabama was ranked number four, and Miami was ranked number one. And that was kind of being billed as the national championship game because if Alabama were winning that game, they they would have jumped and shared, but you know, back then they, you, know, you used to share uh, co national champions. And yeah. you, you know, a number four Alabama team beating a number one Miami team. You know, they would have got a share. Well, Prince Wembley was um, a receiver, and he caught this pass and picked up a huge first down and spiked the ball and um, come over the sidelines. And when he came over the sidelines, Curry grabbed him by the face mask, and he had his face mask right up to his nose. 
and he had his finger sticking in his um you know where the eye thing was where it was right in his eye i mean mm-hmm. and he would just you could just see the grit in his teeth wow. and you know can you imagine what would happen today if yeah. a coach called a player like that i think somebody needs to send curry to talk to burton I mean, that, that's another thing. That's another thing that is kind of bothers me is they hadn't gotten that fixed either. I mean, I, it didn't get called, but it easily could have. The touchdown Burton had, he kicked the defensive player off of him. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that – and, I mean, it wasn't the guy just was trying to get off of him and he shoved him off with the bottom of his cleats. And I'm like, that could have and probably should have been called. And I if they have that, he, he, he and to me, yesterday. I think the biggest wild cards that could end up costing us again, you know, how all those years it was the kicker, we're like, dang, dang this kicker is going to cost us a game one day. Yes. Well, right now, the two biggest things that's going to end up, two biggest fundamental things that's going to end up costing us a game is Burton or Kool Aid. Because these are I, simple I guess, things. Simple I guess things. My, my point was talking about more how the media is now. Because if they mm-hmm. caught a coach with a kid by the face mask, with his mm-hmm. finger in his face, they would have a conniption. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, Saban needs to just basically sit them. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why he's letting him get away with it. Do you oh, man, man, I wish he would button down on it, though. One thing, and we'll get off here, um, is we'll get all Alabama stuff. Do you remember that uh, national championship game that Alabama won? And there was um, a defensive back, and he was arguing with a coach. And he started to go after that coach. And that big old white safety, Kelly Holcomb, just clotheslined his ass. <laughs> I mean, just one, you know, his right arm across his uh, chest. What, what just, year was that, this? That was the year we beat Georgia's first time national championship game. And a defensive back tried to go after a coach. I think like I do remember going, that. I was, was, I was thinking that sounds recent. Yeah. I think he, I vaguely going, remember that. He was going to physically attack him. Like he was going head steam, and Kelly Holcomb just stepped in and just clotheslined him, man, and just flattened him. I remember that. That was that was that was great. Um I mean, because if he had if he would have got on that guy. Say again. He would have got on that guy. And then, um, I don't know if you remember this year or not, but it was back during the Spur years that's playing Georgia. It was back when every other year, you know, one of them would beat the other. And they had a close game. And um, the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator almost got in a fight in the sideline. And the players had to break them up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not like your pills getting you, man, so I won't keep you up, and I'll watch the rest of these games. All right, man. Uh, I will uh, guess I'll touch base with you during the week, and we'll, we'll do uh, another react on a prediction show on Friday. Looks like a soft week, honestly. I was kind of glancing over it. So if you want to come up with another topic or something, you know, we can do that. Okay, I think I'll, I'll come up with something interesting. I mean, we can do like a little prediction and then, you know, oh, well. with it, you know, something else. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you then. All right, man.